As you know, Russia is invading neighbouring Ukraine, a country of 44 million people, a sovereign state for the past 30 years since the breakup of the Soviet Union, the largest country by area in Europe, aside from Russia, and a country that gave up its Soviet-era nuclear arsenal in the 1990s on the basis that Russia, the US and Europe would guarantee its security. So much for that, hey? Now, I gave you my perspective yesterday about why this matters, why this is a crucial moment for global affairs, why Western liberal democracies, the free world, in other words, need to stand up for sovereign states and democracy and stand up against autocratic and dictatorial regimes. So let me today just update events and show you why we have every right to be nervous, even anxious, about the lack of American leadership, the weak global posture of the nation's leading superpower. First, let's see a bit of US President Joe Biden's scripted appearance overnight, denouncing Russia and imposing sanctions. Who in the Lord's name does Putin think gives him the right to declare new so-called countries on territory that belong to his neighbors? This is a flagrant violation of international law and demands a firm response from the international community. Over the last few months, we've coordinated closely with our NATO allies and partners in Europe and around the world to prepare that response. We've said all along, and I've told Putin to his face some month, a month, more than a month ago, that we would act together. And the moment Russia moved against Ukraine, Russia has now undeniably moved against Ukraine by declaring these independent states. So today, I'm announcing the first tranche of sanctions to impose costs on Russia in response to their actions yesterday. Yeah, economic sanctions, financial sanctions, costs that have been flagged and no doubt factored in by Vladimir Putin. Nothing Russia can't handle. No real cost in geostrategic or security terms. Other allies, of course, followed in their condemnation, including our own. Russia is at peak readiness to now complete a full-scale invasion of Ukraine, and that is likely to occur um, within the next 24 hours. And there are even reports already of shelling and things of that nature, which could indicate that it has already begun. It's a grim time, and this is a conflict, of course, far from Australia's direct sphere of influence, far from our direct national interests a dilemma primarily for the NATO nations. The Europeans really should be putting much more on the line, but they tend to defer to the US, even outsource to the US. Australia will rightly do our bit. We will be doing this in concert, as I said, with our many allies and partners, but the Australian government will immediately begin placing sanctions on Russian individuals in response to the aggression by Russia against Ukraine. But these moves, no matter how many countries sign on, are very unlikely to change Russia's plans. And with the Europeans all too typically looking to appease Putin, looking to negotiate away an entire country, it's once again the US that the world looks to, to stand up for freedom, to try to resist an authoritarian aggressor. And this is what really worries me. And as you know, it's what worried me before the last US election. And that is that apart from a contemporary thirst in the US for a more isolationist stance, a drawing back from the world that Republicans and Democrats have urged in recent years, the real question is whether Joe Biden is up to the task. Here he is at his latest domestic event. Thank you for not cancelling on us. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, we don't have much going on, uh, you know, other than Russia and Ukraine. And... Anyway, uh, should we start? I guess I'm starting, huh? I guess I already started. Yeah, he sure does have a lot on his plate. But with some countries urging a Biden-Putin summit, do they really believe this president is capable of intimidating the Russian leader, of persuading him to respect international law? Even in domestic set-piece discussions, Biden often seems all at sea. OK. Do I yield to you now or do I go on? You can 
can go on. I can go on, okay. Uh, Alicia, um, tell me about you, what you guys are doing. And, of course, there's cause to believe that he's not even on top of his brief. He's often referred to the wrong nations in press conferences. And in this event, he seemed to misunderstand the size of the Russian economy. Kind of an important fact, that, the size of the Russian economy. And he seemed to misunderstand it by a factor of about 100%. And, uh, and I, as someone was pointing out to me uh, today... Uh, your economy in California is bigger than uh, uh, about the size of Russia's. Um, for real. No. <laughs> twice, yeah. twice, twice the size, twice, Mr. President. Yeah, the fifth largest economy in the world, so but, treat but, us well. Thank but, you. But, 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 but who's paying attention, right? <laughs> no, but all kidding aside, it's been great. And that's, that, that's mainly because uh, I think uh, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Gina McCarthy to facilitate the remainder of this conversation. Yeah, despite the size of its population and its landmass, the Russian economy is not much bigger than Australia's, half the size of California's. The world needs a strong US. That's been the case for more than a century, of course, but American leadership probably hasn't been as sorely needed since the end of the Cold War. Can Biden provide that leadership? I remind you, he's got nearly three years left to run and his vice president has little experience and seemingly no idea. Now, many of you with long memories criticised me because I couldn't bring myself to advocate for Donald Trump in the 2016 election campaign, even though I knew he was a good chance to win. But I tell you what, I was pleasantly surprised by his foreign policy actions and I applauded his steadfast support for Israel that has helped to reshape Middle Eastern affairs. He stood up strongly to China too, and he demanded more of his NATO allies. The typical anti-Trump media portrayed him as a risk on foreign policy, a danger. But the world is much more dangerous with Joe Biden at the helm. Just remind yourselves, go down this memory lane, it's only a matter of weeks ago, of what the US president said that was almost an invitation to Vladimir Putin. I'm not so sure that he has uh, David, I'm not so sure he has uh, is certain what he's going to do. My guess is he will move in. He has to do something. Yeah, my guess is he will go in. He had to do something, did he? Well, Biden's job was to warn him off. He did the opposite. So far, the Biden administration is a scary confirmation of the maxim that weakness is provocative.